So I'm in this local woodland area this evening on a bit of a kind of a recon mission, I guess. Just searching for new locations, different compositions of this area. I've been here many times, but and it doesn't look like much right now. But you get a nice thin layer of fog or some actually some dense fog. It's even better. This area really comes to life. And where I'm at in North Carolina is uh, usually fall. It's kind of the, the foggy season. And it's pretty common to get a couple uh, good foggy mornings rather frequently. But what happens, at least to me at least, or, or often, you know, you, you wake up, you look out the window, and there's just thick fog everywhere. You run around, you get your camera gear, you run out the door, you get in your car, and then you kind of just start driving around aimlessly, trying to figure out what to shoot with the fog. The conditions are perfect, but, you know, what are you going to shoot with it? So I'm trying to come up with a list of, you know, some of my favorite local spots, you know, within like a 30 minute drive that look great under foggy conditions. So that way, when the conditions are right, I'll be ready to go. And while I was out here, I just wanted to wrap up this four part series that I have, um, I had created about uh, my kind of 12 month experiment into becoming a full time landscape photographer. And for those of you who have joined along and watched all those episodes, I, I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. It means a lot. And for those of you who have no idea what I'm even talking about, I'll give you the cliff notes real quick. On July 24th of last year of uh, 2018, my uh, 17 year run in the corporate world came to an end. And I was really faced with the decision. I could either you know, polish up my resume and start firing it off and get another job in the corporate world with the benefits and the 401k and the salary and the safety that comes with that type of a job. And that's great. Or I could take the next 12 months, and this is where the experiment comes into, and see if I could become a full-time landscape photographer, turn my hobby into a career. And I thought long and hard about that because I graduated college and I immediately went into the corporate world. And I was there for 17 years. And when that was over, I was 39 years old. And I just turned 40 a couple weeks ago. And it's absolutely flown by. And I was afraid that if I went ahead and got another job in the corporate world, I would blink my eyes and I'd be 60 years old. And I was afraid that, I was worried that I would live with regret one day that I never gave landscape photography a real run at becoming a career and turning that passion into a, a, a full-time living. And that was something that I really didn't want to live without. I wanted to dedicate everything I could to becoming a full-time landscape photographer for 12 months. And if it didn't work out, then I'll go and get a, you know, the, the normal nine to five job. But at least I could say I gave it a shot. So that was the purpose of this four part series. And it was never intended to be a series. Actually, it just started off with just a couple of updates, but I ended up doing a uh, quarterly update and this will be the, uh, the final episode. Now, one of the questions that I do get asked uh, rather frequently, I don't, not hundreds and thousands of times, but I do get this question a few times a week. And it's, it's basically, you know, what advice would I have for anybody that's looking to turn their photography hobby into a career? And I feel honestly a little awkward even answering that question because I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit myself. But if I were to give any advice, it would be really to diversify. And I don't mean diversify the genre of photography that you're in. I'm not saying to shoot landscapes, shoot weddings, portraits, events, birthday parties, not like that, but, but really diversify your revenue channels. And it's something that was really difficult for me in the beginning because I was so used to in the corporate world where you have one revenue stream, you get paid on the 15th of every month and you get paid on the last day of every month. And it's like clockwork and it never changes. And you can always rely on that consistency. So, but in photography, you don't really have that. You're not going to have one revenue stream. You're going to have a ton. I actually have eight different revenue streams right now. And I actually dwindled that down from 12. And to manage eight different revenue streams, it's almost like managing eight different jobs. But any one of those revenue streams by themselves was not enough to support me. But when you combine them all together, then it makes a little bit more sense. Now, one of the most difficult aspects of trying to figure out the whole you know, multi-revenue stream model is what revenue streams work. Because what works for me might not work for you and what works for somebody else might not work for me. So you, it's a lot of trial and error to determine exactly what's gonna work. And when I first started out, I jotted down every possible revenue stream I could think of for outdoor and landscape photographer. And I did a ton of research and I'll share them all with you today. So hopefully you can save yourself some time if uh, you're interested in doing this as well. But in the beginning, for the first six or nine months, I worked like crazy 
on so many different various revenue streams to figure out exactly what worked. And it took a lot of time. And I really went after about 12 different streams. And I went after every single one of them with a lot of, uh, it was really as much energy as I could possibly put towards that many different things at once. And it took a lot of work and a lot of time, but eventually I got to the point to where I could determine what isn't working. And that was really important. And I know it sounds kind of, in, kind, kind of counterintuitive that I would be excited about finding out what's not working, but the best part of finding out what doesn't work is you can take the time that you dedicated towards the channels that are not working, take that time and apply it towards the channels that are working. But some of the things that didn't work for me, reaching out to tourism boards, or reaching out to media companies that uh, create social media campaigns for uh, other companies, like outdoor companies that sell maybe outdoor apparel. They reach out to these media agencies and they usually want some type of outdoor or landscape photography for any, some type of a um, you know, magazine promotion they're doing or a commercial or a social media uh, campaign that they're doing. I reached out to various companies like that with really no success at all. Things like stock photography, that didn't work at all for me whatsoever. So there was various things that I really worked hard to try and get some traction on, but just didn't work for me. And it took me about nine, eight or nine months to determine that, you know what, Mark, these things are not working. No matter how many different ways you try and work them, they're just not gonna work for you. You just need to abandon them and move on to something else. I swear, it doesn't matter what time of day I get out, I just, it's so hot and so muggy and the mosquitoes are absolutely relentless. <laughs> but, so some of the revenue streams that I focus on now, of course, YouTube is a big one for me. It's been an absolutely tremendous platform in a way to help me to get my work out there. I think that's one of the most difficult aspects for a photographer is just getting their work out there. It's not enough anymore just to have a website. You have to have a way to kind of drive people to your website. So YouTube has been fantastic for me in that respect. And it's also been a, a, a good revenue uh, driver for me as well. So YouTube is definitely one of my main revenue sources. Uh, things like Visual Wilderness. If you're not familiar with them, they're a online educational company that focuses on outdoor and landscape photography. If uh, you've never been to their website, I would definitely encourage you to do so. I'll put a link in the description below. And check it out. There's a lot of free content on there as well. There's a lot of paid tutorials as well. I've been uh, writing articles for them and I also create video tutorial series. These are huge tutorials. And a lot of them are over 100 minutes worth of content. And I just completed my third series, which I think will be live in mid-August but um, I don't want this to be a, a big commercial for that kind of stuff. But uh, nevertheless, Visual Wilderness has been great. I've been able to generate a few hundred dollars a month from them. Um, Skype post-processing sessions that I do has also been something that's been a fantastically consistent. Once again, a few hundred dollars a month. I do a few of those every single week where I uh, get on Skype and uh, edit someone's photos. And we talk about really whatever they want to talk about it, whether it's one hour or two hours, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I enjoy it a lot. Um, things like um, workshops. So workshops was something that I wanted to do in 2019 and I wasn't able to devote enough attention to setting those up. But I was interviewed on the F8 Photographers podcast a couple weeks ago, which is hosted by Chris Smith, who is also the founder of the Out of Chicago Photography Company. And he had invited me to be an instructor at the upcoming Out of Oregon Landscape Photography Conference along the Oregon coast this fall, and out of Moab and out of Acadia next year as well, which is a huge opportunity for me. Absolutely blew me away. I'm super duper excited about that. Some of my favorite landscape photographers in the world are instructors at these events. Uh, Aaron Bobnick, uh, Nick Page, Sean Bagshaw, Gavin Hardcastle, they're, they're all there. So just to be amongst them at these events is just absolutely tre tremendous for me. I still can't even believe it actually, but I am planning on doing more uh, of my own workshops in 2020. So uh, that'll be a big focus of mine moving forward. Um, things like Amazon affiliate. So those are the links that are in the description below. If you click on the link and you buy the product, I get a tiny, tiny commission. But if you add it all up, it's once again, a few hundred dollars a month in my pocket. And that's what I was saying. None of these revenue channels by themselves is, uh, would work. The only way all this works is by having as, as many revenue channels as you possibly can and you sum it all together. And you're hopefully at the end of the month, you're left with a, uh, a number that is enough for you to live off of. And I'm sure I'm missing a, a couple revenue channels right now. Uh, prints. 
I don't make a ton of money off those. One, two, maybe $300 a month at the most. That'd be a big month. I'm just selling uh, maybe two, three a, a month. It's something that I haven't really focused on a lot. I'm not 100% sure exactly um, what I need to change with that, but I think the number one thing I need to change is I just need to focus on it a little bit more. And then sponsorships. So over the past two, three months, I've had a, a I've been contacted a lot by companies to want to do sponsored videos. And I've always told myself I'm not going to do a sponsored video unless it's mutually beneficial for myself and for you all. I don't want to just do a sponsored video just so I can get a few extra hundred dollars a month in my pocket, although I need it, but I just want it to be more of a mutually beneficial thing. And that will be a new revenue stream for me because I do have my first one coming up in mid-August. It's, uh, it's not Squarespace, but it's something that I think you'll, uh, you'll enjoy and it's definitely something that you can benefit from. So I'm not gonna do a ton of those. I'm thinking just maybe, I don't know, three or four a year at the absolute most, but that'll be something else that I can count on. So um, I believe that's all of the revenue channels that I'm focusing on right now. And I am happy to say that this month, July, that I'm filming this video in right now, which is the 12th month of this 12-month 12 12 experiment, will be my largest revenue-generating month that I've ever had since this entire uh, pursuit has started. And I am going to end up making just under $3,000, which is nothing crazy, but it's all photo photography-related income, and it's something I'm pretty proud of, and it's definitely something that uh, I can live off of right now. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at as far as just from an overall income perspective. So it was kind of ironic that the, the final month was the largest month. So I hope you have enjoyed this series. I know it was definitely fun for me to, uh, to make. I spent the, the last uh, couple hours, even before I came out here, and I knew I was gonna obviously make this video, but I spent some time watching the previous three videos, and it was really interesting just to see exactly um, you know, what I was saying, uh, the way I was saying it, I'm pretty good at reading myself, so I, re I know exactly what I was thinking when I was making those videos. And it was just kind of interesting to see my mindset then and just to know where I'm at right now. And I definitely am not in the clear at all. I definitely have to continue to work as hard as I possibly can. And one thing that has really resonated with me throughout this entire thing is the fact that I have never, ever in my life worked as hard as I have for anything than I have this past 12 months. The days of nine to five and being off on the weekends is definitely over. It feels like every single day is a work day and working 70 or 80 hours a week is definitely not unusual anymore. But it's been a, a blast. It's been a fantastic ride. And no matter what happens in the future, I will never forget the last 12 months and what that meant for me. So I hope you enjoyed the video series. This will be the last one in the series. I'm not gonna make any more of these like this unless I make another just kind of one-off video about something very specific, but this will be the last one in this four-part series. So if you watch them, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week.